We all do it, whether we mean to or not. Sometimes it's idle gossip with a girlfriend, and other times it's with the intentions of a writer. But nevertheless, we all tell stories. April 27th is National Tell a Story Day, and with me to kick off the holiday is the one and only true crime author, Paul Merlino. First thing I wanted to talk about was while stories really speak for themselves with elements of excitement and suspense and mystery, but again, it's still up to you to bring the story to life through your words. Will you speak a little bit about that process? Well, some of the process was easy because Walt, um, as I grew up with him, he would repeat the story over and over again. And as I sort of said in the first book, he told the stories the same way. So I was able to hear the stories and they rarely, if ever, varied. So I know, number one, they weren't really embellished because the stories stay the same. And two, I found them as a boy and a young man fascinating. Right. So what I tried to do is to take the enthusiasm that I had and transport it to the reader. I tried to be as factual as possible but sometimes I had to embellish. And let me give you an example. Um, I don't recall the names of all his coworkers and partners and, and officers in the NYPD. So what I'll do is, is, is make up names and, and, and to bring them to life. I do recall these pictures, photographs of some of his closer partners um, Detective Perez, like in the House of Hoodoo. And so I could see him in my mind's eye. And so I could paint the picture of him and for the readers so they could see him flaws and all. But the point of the matter is for me, writing about Walt, it was, I think, more easy because he was a real life character. Walt was my dad. And two, the stories I could go back to in my, um, in my collection of uh, newspaper articles where the case was in the paper and I could go back and, and check the facts and then remember the stories and, and convey them to the readers. With the lockdowns we, globally, I think a lot of people were taking the opportunity to write stories as I did. And, and so you're out there trying to find a, a niche and um, I found it um, unwittingly with the homicides in Harlem um, and I sort of lost it a little bit going into the House of Hoodoo, where it was more fantasy, as I could imagine it, as opposed to real life stories. So I'm going back in the third book to be more like Homicides in Harlem and a little bit less like um, House of Hoodoo. That's interesting. So the third book, The Girl Who Saved Castro, you're reverting back to Homicides in Harlem for how you're going to be writing historical fiction, the story. Correct. So, and, and what I'm thinking of doing, and a and, and, uh, couple things. Number one, um, how I think I'm going to approach it, because again, um, the feedback has been very important. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to start with Walt in, um, in the Castro story of maybe chapter one, making the arrest. So I was arresting, thinking that. Arresting the, um, the uh, would-be assassin. Yes. And then maybe Walter, as he's taking him to the precinct house or to the, uh, to the uh, jail, then thinking, how did I get here? How did, the, and how did this all happen? And then going back to as he was going through the police academy and, and telling stories about how he made stupid mistakes as a rookie cop and then, and then, and then how he was honing his skills um, in, the, in the early 50s and then how he became a hardcore um, detective in the, in, in the mid, late 50s, getting him to the point of, of um, uh, capturing a assassin of Fidel Castro. So I think that's probably how we, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start the book at the end, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, then, and then weave stories in and out and maybe occasionally coming back to, to the Castro story um, as you build up to the climax. Um, so, so what people will get is the best, I would think, of two worlds. The, yep. They'll get all sort of anecdotes and stories, good, bad, different, as, um, as, a, as a young and, and, and middle-aged um, policeman. 
and you get the uh, Castro story. So rather than writing just one Castro story or a, a new compilation of, of Homicides in Harlem, which I could do too, I'm going to sort of marry the two and see how it goes. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, we'll work on the fourth book. <laughs> This is a whole new beast in itself because you wrote the first and second book in totally separate ways and now you're combining right. both to try for a third. This is so cool. That's, that's in itself another way to tell a story. There are so many different ways to write and read and this is going to be a good one. I can't wait. That's exciting. What are your takes on podcasting, audiobooks, and would you ever bring Walt to life through the airs? I, I did a very, very um, mild peak at um, what it would um, what it would take, and you sort of need to have almost an actor or to, to read the book. Right. Um, number one, you also need so you have to get recording time, and and so you're looking at a unit cost. If 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 it's like I don't know less than five dollars to do a book um, on Amazon, um, you're looking at something north of forty fifty dollars to do a. Um, a, a, an audio book so that's a you know it's a huge difference however you know I have to weigh the cost of, of you get a much bigger audience I think people would be more likely I want to hear this so it's something something I, I will consider and 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 whether I'm going to do it this book or the next or the fourth book I'm not quite sure if you know any actors aspiring actors that are interested in reading the book I would be interested in talking to them about it because yeah. right now um, my uh, my boys tell me I don't have the voice of an actor, and 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 therefore they won't take my book seriously. Although I said at least you know you're hearing from the author, that's not bad. <laughs> you know I would I'd like to hear a book but you know read by Stephen King, you know The Shining. I Great. think that'd be cool. But, but my boys don't disagree. They they say no, Dad, you got to get you got to get someone that sounds like Clint Eastwood reading. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, well, I think Clint might be a little bit expensive. <laughs> I do think you would reach a whole different generation of readers by having an audiobook because that's the new thing. You pick up your phone, you listen to podcasts, you're on the go. And I do think there are people out there who would say, I would love this book, this theme. I would watch it as a movie. I would listen to it, but I'm not going to read it. You're sort of convincing me. So again, this might be a first time. I'm, I'm starting to feel my, <laughs> my arm being twisted in a very nice way because I think you're right. I'd like to reach out to a bigger audience. Who right would voice. be your dream actor? Who would be the number, if, you know, money wasn't an option, who would you want? Wow. Wow. Playing Walt, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt would be a good Walt. He could be tough. He could be compassionate. He could be, he could be loving. He could be uh, downright nasty. Yeah. Brad Pitt I love would be that. Great. Brad Pitt. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Any young, the next Brad Pitt, if you're out there, Come well, on, Brian, if you're listening now, yeah. opportunity knocks. <laughs> what would you say is the hardest part of being an author and telling your story? What do you ever come by any roadblocks during the writing process? I once I start, I said, I guess the hardest part is just starting. Mm -hmm. and, and I think probably most authors would say that it's once you start, it starts flowing, at least for me. The the issue is really going through the first second edits because um you get something down and you start editing the work and and go i didn't say that did i you know and i guess i did um and then dialogue just reading it and typing in dialogue um what i've started doing in this book is i would get one of my willing sons to come over and read the dialogue out loud with me so because Sometimes what looks good on, in writing is awkward when, if you say it. And, 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 and I can't see that or feel that unless I hear it. And, right. so, um, and so that's just like one little tip. I would, I would say if you have dialogue or significant dialogue, read it out loud with somebody else. So right. you, Because if I read it, I'll read it the way I think it should be. But if my son's reading the word for word, I didn't say that. Well, yeah, you did that. Look, and 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 uh, I go, well, that's horrible. He goes, yeah, you said it. <laughs> so so you can see it, and then you can fix it. What other advice or tips and tricks do you have for any aspiring young writers out there? It's the story that matters. It's it's, and it doesn't have to. It's, it, it, and I would even argue, it's probably easier to write something true, and it could be about your life. It could be, and because people find little things that are realistic 
more moving. I think people can relate heart to heart with other human beings and they can intuitively tell, unless you're a master, Stephen King, um, you're a master at, at fiction, I think it's easier to talk about something you know, you, you relish, and you can, and, and your enthusiasm for the subject um, shows. So, right. so that's what I would suggest. Mm -hmm. That's that's so smart. And you're right, passion. It really shows if you love what you're writing about and you are putting your all into it, a story is going to come out of it. True, true, true. This is my next wall book. Um, I'm, I'm looking at um, looking at aspects of my life. And, and again, just following that advice, my own advice, your advice, um, because I, I, I worked over in Russia for a long time. I worked and lived in Japan for a long time. Um, lived here in the UK for a long time. Each, each area had fascinating stories, which again, um, the question is, how do you present it in a way to keep people's interest? And um, I don't have the stories of Walt, nothing, nothing as exciting. However, I had funnier stories and, and, um, and more human stories in terms of, of, of dealing with people of different cultures and in different places and getting myself into and out of trouble, which, which might be interesting. But again, that's a project after um, the girl saved Castro. There is so much to look forward to. I mean, and even the theme that you did, historical fiction, you could also always copy House of Voodoo. And when you tell the stories through your life, you could always add some fantasy in there and different elements. So there's so much to reach. And Palau, you've lived an interesting life. Walt lived an interesting life. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, I, 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 and I try to use this to get my son to live an interesting life, and not to be always locked in and locked down. Because, you know, go out, don't be afraid. You know, it needs to continue. We need the stories to continue generation to generation. We need it to happen. Yeah, but I have to get them to read the book. And they said, they, well, they're resisting. They said, once you get the audio book made, then we'll listen. Let's say years have gone now. You've published book after book about not only Walt, but yourself. Yeah. Who would you want to play Paul Merlino? Well, no, that's a good one. Um, I see myself sometimes like Jack Nicholson with a sarcastic sense of humor, witty, right. sometimes cruel, uh, charming. Would not always say, you know, and, and, and so Jack Nicholson would be probably one of my favorite actors. And then I told my wife, I said, and then we'll get, uh, I, I want um, Nicola Kidman to play you. And, and, and so she goes, but she's Australian, she's tall, and she's blonde, and I'm Japanese, and I'm short. And I go, well, you know, in Hollywood, anything's possible. Yes. Now, in honor of Walt and National Tell a Story Day, I want everyone out there to go and pick up House of Hoodoo, Homicides in Harlem, and read, 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 or yourself, tell a story, pass a story along. And Paul, will you give the viewers one story that really stuck with you? Now, Walt told so many stories time and time again, but one that you could share with us to just seal us off into the day of National Tell a Story Day. When Walt was about 15 or 16 years old, in 1950, excuse me, 1939, he um, was with his friend Raleigh down at the port of New York, looking at all the wonderful cruise ships that were coming in from all over the world. And there was a beautiful yacht that, um, that was there. And, 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 and um, they were looking at the yacht and a man came out and a um, well-dressed man. And he said, you want to board the yacht boys and and they go oh wow yeah and he said come on out and take a look at my yacht and they walked around the yacht and he was showing them the, the steering wheel and they you no know, showing them around the yacht the boys were, were fascinated and 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 the guy had an accent and um and he said that um again this is 1939 he said i um build aircraft because that's how i can afford to buy this yacht and he said, um, and the boys were just fascinated. They said, gosh, what, what it would be like to do this? He goes, do you want to, do you want to um, become part of the crew? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, he goes, well, what I need is a letter from your parents. And, and, and here's my name and address. I'm going to be here for two days. If you want, you come back and I'll, you can be a part of my crew. 
And Walter went home and told his dad about the wonderful yacht. And he goes, the man said, you know, he, 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 we could become part of the crew and we we're going to go back to Europe. And he, you know, he was reading the letter. And it was a guy by the name of, I think, Folker, F-O-L-K-E-R, who made uh, aircraft um, for the German Air Force. And, and so, um, and in 1939, there was peace between the US and Germany. But, but, you know, things were not going, looking great. And like my grandfather said, you know, you idiot, because you know, do you want to, you, <laughs> you're going to get over there, you're going to be going to war soon, and you're going to be um, drafted into the German army. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You> go, no, <laughs> you can't go. <laughs> go around and go, mom, dad won't let me, this is a chance of a lifetime. She goes, no, no, no. <laughs> You're not going to go to Europe. You're not going to, get, you know, you're not going to, and and, and 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 it turned out to be a very wise decision. And, and, and but 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 that stuck with me because I could see as a young boy how all that you know how that could how that could um, fascinate going you know going to sea and working the sails on a big sail ship, and yet um, the wisdom of Grandpa who said you know the the um, the you know clouds of war are coming and 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 by the way the Germans are not at, in the government was not were not great people so um you know you, you want to stay clear of them so uh, so that was yeah that was that was actually I think you 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 that's a good story to put into the, <laughs> we'll have to weave that in somehow into the book I mean there are plenty of Walt stories as you know it's just a question of which ones do you choose. I know it's hard. That, that was such a great story. That's another one. It's so interesting. What a life. That is so it, And I, I heard some sirens go by just Walt saying hi while you were telling the story. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think I think I think Walt must be um, amused by all this. And yeah. I, I, I can't help but think he is. But um, but but equally, equally, um, you know, I I, I kind of wish um, I wish in hindsight had recorded him. I can't wait for the next book, The Girl Lucia Castro. So many exciting things coming, Paul. Thank you so much. It is always a pleasure speaking with you. My big takeaway, other than um, uh, National Story Day, is, is to, um, to really look into the um, audiobooks because I, I, I'm hearing it more often. And when someone like yourself, a uh, celebrity, tells me to do this, I have to take notice. So um, thank you. And I, I will take notice. And maybe we'll have to look at it for this third book, not the fourth book. Yes, yes. I can't wait, Paul. Thank you so much.